Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living board breaker boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1500 ladder. Despite this format not being all that good, uh, it apparently shows in my uh, analytics that people want to know about board breakers, and I figured, you know, I was actually going to upload a video today talking about board breakers, and it just so happens that the algorithm has people looking for it. So, let's talk about it. Now, as I say in all these videos, I don't know how to make none of these tier lists. I just find them online here and hope that someone actually knows what the heck they're talking about. Found this one. Seems pretty up-to-date. Seems pretty decent. Um, obviously, if there's something I'm missing, then let me know down in the comments, and I'll respond to y'all uh, uh, as soon as I can. Um, but for the tier spots, we have broken. You should be playing these. A tier, also pretty good. B tier, uh, kind of decent. And then I guess, like, sure. And then just the absolute patented booty, booty, butt cheek category. You shouldn't be playing these board breakers. If you are, uh, you need to kind of reevaluate what kind of deck you'd be playing, pimp. Uh, although, with that being said, in my analytics, it also said people are looking up anti meta decks, which. <laughs> I guess, like people are that tired of the format. Anyway, uh, let's just go ahead and jump around here, starting off with a Dark Ruler no more. Uh, dark Ruler is obviously a super good board breaker. I mean, I think it will always be a great board breaker, especially for going second when you're not caring about trying to OTK the opponent with like Tempai or something like that. Um, dark Ruler, we even saw in the 60 card hero list where the hero player was playing one copy of it in his main because he was playing Thrust. You know, if you have the ability to play a card like Thrust, uh, then yeah, you should definitely be playing some number of copies in your deck of Dark Ruler if you're not going to be playing Hand Traps, just so that if you do end up going second, you have the chance to see it because you are playing Thrust. Um, obviously, if you're playing something like Tempai, you have the option of playing you know 15 to 20 Hand Traps plus some Board Breakers, whether it be Dark Hole or whatever, which I actually just realized Dark Hole isn't on here, but we'll talk about that with Raigeki. Um and obviously, if you're playing a deck that's not Tempai, you can actually get away with playing Dark Ruler. Um, but it depends on how you want to play Tempai. You know, if you want to play all board breakers with like three thrust and some copy of talents, then that is an option for you. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to be playing Dark Ruler. But the fact that thrust can get you to Dark Ruler is, of course, really good. Um, next up here pretty much in tow with uh, Dark Ruler. Evenly Match. Uh, Evenly Match is insane. We saw Yaxine get absolutely obliterated by Evenly Match in that uh, feature match at whatever YCS it was at. Probably YCS Irrelevant, uh, as I'm going to call it, because I can't remember the name, and I think the format's basically just stale at this point as the whale drinks his water. Um, but Evenly Match, uh, same thing as Dark Ruler. You grab it with Thrust. It's amazing going second. If you have the flex spots in your deck, you've got three free slots and you want something for when you go second, just play Evenly Match. I know my dad in his stun deck, he plays Evenly Match and Dark Ruler and even Feather Duster um, just to be able to have a chance at going second, which we'll talk about Feather, Feather Duster with Lightning Storm because they go hand in hand as well. Um, next up here, uh, Alpha. Why the fuck are you playing Alpha? Uh, no, Alpha is god awful. And honestly, same here with Pankratops. Pankratops, I feel it hasn't been power crept, but where the format is headed, if the opponent played Perulia on you, they're going to get a draw, which I feel like the Mole Charmies could all could almost be board breakers because they almost stop the opponent from playing. It's actually pretty crazy. Um, but Pankratops, I feel, has really fallen off. I feel like if it came back to three, it maybe see some play. Unless it's already at three. I can't remember. But <laughs> if it's at three right now, that goes to show that no one cares to play Pankratops. But I thought it was still at two, but I could be wrong. But Pankratops and Alpha, it's just not the format for them. Um, Fenrir goes in the I guess category. Um I don't really know if Fenrir's a board breaker per se. It doesn't really put the opponent on the back foot as much as it used to when it first came out. It's still a good card, don't get me wrong. People, myself included, wanted it banned for a while, and I think it's still banned in the OCG. But uh, I guess, like, you know, kind of like what the tier list says, I guess, Pimp, like, sure. You can get away with it. I feel like you have better options. Um, let's see here. So Raigeki, uh, along with Feather Duster. Uh, this definitely goes in A tier. Um, I wouldn't say that it's super broken. I mean, we're seeing some Tempai decks play Raigeki uh, and Feather Duster and even Dark Hole. Um, and even Lightning Storm, even, with that being said. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know if they're necessarily in the broken category. Because the thing is, with Eveling and Dark Ruler... 
on their own, they pretty much clean up a board. You know, if you have Raigeki plus Lightning Storm, you're pretty much cleaning up a whole board, depending on like what the opponent has established. Um, if you open up Raigeki plus Feather Duster, if you open up Lightning Storm plus Feather Duster, or you know, uh, Dark Hole plus you know Feather Duster, whatever the case may be, Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twister, for whatever reason you're playing that, which don't be playing Twin Twister, that'd be going in the booty booty butt sheet category. It's been power crept. Um, uh, when you combine like Raigeki with something else that's when these types of board breakers get into that broken category but on their own I, I feel like the dark ruler and evenly just stand head and shoulders above as just one card uh, outs that you can draw essentially one card outs that you can draw to just stopping a board because outside of uh, Azamina Rizalago there's no Omni negates in the game right now so uh, I would definitely say that they're they're very good but I think if you're just going to play Raigeki as your one play set of board breakers no, you're better off playing evenly or dark ruler at that point if you've only got three flex spots. Um, <clears throat> why the hell is sales banned? I I don't know the people who make these tier lists, but like, why the hell is sales banned in a fucking board breaker list? Like, <laughs> it's not a board breaker. Uh, I don't know. It, it's it's people trying to look cool, I guess. I don't even know what this card is. Isn't this the card like you play it and then you can banish a monster and then like bring it back in the end? Of the turn? I don't know. This thing ain't a fucking board breaker. Both these cards are trash um let's see here so uh, yeah uh, talents and thrust absolutely actually you know what no talents and thrust go in the broken category i'm almost wondering if talents and or thrust are going to get hit on our next balance that we'll probably get in like january because these cards are seeing play everywhere like you need to in 2024 and even going in 2025 with rise all and malice you need to be playing some combination of dark ruler evenly talents and thrust you need these four cards period end of discussion if you want to be a competitive player honestly even if you want to be competitive on the casual level which is crazy to even say that you you need some form of these four cards whether it's like just dark Dark Ruler and Just Talents or all four, you need to be playing these. These cards are absolutely insane. I, I firmly believe one day we're going to see Talents and Thrust hit on a list. Maybe even evenly in uh, Dark Ruler at some point. Um, Lava Golem. <sighs> Let's put Lava Golem in the B tier. Like, it's not terrible. Um, same with Sphere Mode. Uh, these cards aren't terrible. Sphere Mode more because they have to have three monsters it's not the best thing in the world. You're not always going to get that. Um, like, you shouldn't be playing Sphere Mode with, like, Mulcharmies. Because the Mulcharmies are going to stop the opponent from building a board, and then the Sphere Mode's just dead. Um, same with Lava Golem. I don't... I've seen some decks play Lava and even Sphere Mode, especially in Runic Stun. But I don't know if, if these are really the best cards you could be playing. I feel like you have better options available to you. Um, same with... No, even Kurakara. I think Kurakara goes in C tier. Because, like... What are you Kurakaring that's like staying on the board after it negates? You can't do Rizalago because it tributes for cost. So, uh, no. I, I think it's just not the format for Kurakara. It's not necessarily a bad card. It's just not the format. Uh, Soul Release is garbage now. Um, pfft, this doesn't do anything to Snake Eye. People did this for like five minutes when Snake Eyes first came out. Um, Chalice is garbage. Like, you, you may as well just play Droplet, which I'm going to put an A tier. I wouldn't necessarily say it's broken because not every deck can play it, but... I feel like you could almost play the game of semantics and put the A tier into the fucking broken list and like it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, Droplets is absolutely insane if your deck can play it. If you can, you know, use the resource game to your advantage to, uh, you know, like say activate Red Gek, your Lightning Storm and like if you're playing Tempi and then just go Droplets and send those cards. Like that's what I loved about Tempi when I played it and got 10th place. You know, I would play Lightning Storm, Chain Droplets, send the Lightning Storm, and then, like, negate Masquerina. Like, it, it was broken. Or send a monster and negate Masquerina. Or send a Lightning Storm and a monster out of my hand, negate the Masquerina and something else. Like, it's just so good. Um, Super Poly, same thing. Goes in the A tier. Not every deck can play um, Super Poly. Even decks like Ubel that have Loving Defender um, as a uh, card that they can play, they're not, they're not even playing Super Poly anymore. Um, but it's it's a, still a very solid board breaker, especially if you are playing a version of Ubel that plays Loving Defender. You drop out of Ubel, the opponent's got four or five monsters, you just Super Poly everything away. Like That's that's still a really good move. Um, Metal Tronius, um, again, something that's format dependent. I guess you could play it, but I just feel like that you've just got so many better options. Uh, enemy controller is dog water. Um, uh, Snake Eye's not even playing this anymore. Like, why? Just, no. Um, change of heart. I'll put it in the A tier, sure. Like, it's not a bad card. I just... Uh, when when you're... Can, when you have so many options and you have to pick the 
best cards possible. I don't feel like change of heart and even mind control by extension. Hitting one for one cards, I think isn't really the game plan here. Like I feel like that just doesn't do enough. Um, you know, you need to be hitting the entire board if you can, you know, getting maximum at card value. And I feel like change of heart and mind control hitting one monster, I think just isn't enough. Um, Book of Eclipse, uh, same thing, but I would definitely say it's better than change of heart and mind control. In fact, I'm gonna put change of heart and mind control down here because like, no, they ain't going to no damn A tier. Book of Eclipse, um, hella solid. Helps you play around things like Valor and all that. Um, more Book of Moon than Eclipse, obviously, but that's still an option. If your deck can play Eclipse, then like by all means, play it. Um, yeah, I mean, again, not every deck can play it. It's not that generic, but... It's, it's still a really good card. Um, Ultimate Slayer, no, I'd rather go touch grass. <laughs> and then pff, I'm putting the Kaijus in booty booty butt cheeks. Is anyone even playing Kaijus anymore? Like, Kashtira Arise Heart is banned. So, like, there's nothing to Kaiju. Uh, even, uh, no, I'm putting this in B tier. Like, the more I think about it with Book of Eclipse, I'm like, no, it's... I don't think it's necessarily A tier. I've seen some decks like Top Regionals and stuff play Book of Eclipse, but when when you're comparing it against everything else, um, you know, Raigeki in tandem with Dark Hole. Dark Hole would obviously be in the A tier if it was on this list, but I guess this person didn't know how to make one. Um, yeah, I just... Uh, Kaijus... Again, the one-for-one -one swap doesn't do anything right now just because decks can build such big boards right now in this format, which is really just unfortunate. Um and Book of Eclipse, like, okay, you can Book of Eclipse the Wave High King, you can't Book of Eclipse Lynx, you can Book of Eclipse Flamberge, but you can't Eclipse the Mascarena. I just feel like that there's better options. It's certainly not bad, um, but, ugh, no. I, I wouldn't be playing Book of Eclipse right now if I was actually playing this format, which, as you all know, I've been taking a break because, I, no, I, I've made over $1,200 from my case of Rage of the Abyss that I paid over $1,000 on. I'm good. I'll sit back and make money and play Rise All when that comes out. Because I have no events right now, so it's like I'm living in Europe even though I'm in Florida. Guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Um, this is this format's a mess. That's all I got to say. Uh, just, no, I'm waiting until January. Or just keep playtesting for February when we get the YCS in Orlando. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.